Hey guys, look what I got. That's right, I got the BAE Hawk T1A. This is a plug and play six cell, 12 bladed fan. It's got retracts, it's got flaps, it's got bright LED lights. But coming up next, we are gonna see what's going on inside. Here's a look inside the box. As you can see, we've got that manual, user manual right there up front. And we've got the wire right there in front of that. Now that wire is used to snake the wires throughout the plane as needed. And we are gonna take everything out of the box and take a closer look coming up next. All right guys, here is what everything looks like outside of the box. Everything was poly bagged on both ends, nice sealed poly bag stuff. And I looked everything over and everything looks good on first inspection, and that makes me very happy. And when you make an investment like this, that is awesome. Now, one thing I wanna say is you cannot tell just how big this fuselage is through the camera. I couldn't tell when I watched Motion RC's video, but this thing is huge. It is, it, and it looks beautiful, the finish, the lights, all this stuff, I cannot wait to put this thing together. And I'm gonna talk about the battery really quick, but after that, we are gonna put this thing together and test some stuff out. Okay guys, this is the battery that I wanted to mention. This is an NFAM 4200 milliamp hour battery. The recommended battery is the Admiral 4000. Now this has the exact same dimensions and weight as that Admiral only you get a little extra flight time out of this thing. And the 45C rating on this is very conservative and the price is lower. So I wanted to let you guys know that. The reason why I can recommend this so highly is because John VHRC absolutely ripped with his Freewing F16 70 millimeter jet with his battery. So I'm gonna include a link to this battery as well as that flight. That way you guys can know what I'm talking about. Coming up next, I'm gonna show you this plane all put together. All right, guys, this thing is all put together. And as you can see, I've got the lights plugged in. This is actually red. I don't know why it's looking green through the monitor, but it is. Probably my bright studio lights. Sometimes it can do weird things to color. But here, I've got it all put together and set up except I don't have any of these linkages connected anywhere. But I do have everything set up in the battery bay. I wanted to show you guys how cool the lights look. And I hope that looks good, except for that green coming through with the red. I really am impressed with this thing. This is a queen size bed, and this big old jet makes it look like a little twin or something, so. All right, coming up next, I am gonna shut out the lights so you can see just how bright these lights are. Here we are, guys. Now you can see that the light is indeed red, a nice bright red. This light in the front is really bright. It's gonna look so cool coming right at you. And of course, this green, if you look over here, it's illuminating the wall and everything behind my light box, which is sweet. All right, coming up next, I'm gonna show you the inside of the battery bay. Okay guys, so here's a look inside the battery bay. This is where I've got my receiver mounted. Now, with this particular receiver, you wanna make sure that this and this make an L. Uh, I may move this up to maybe be more in a horizontal plane with that. This is still preliminary. Uh, so I've got some Velcro down there at the bottom. I like to use that and then put Velcro on the bottom of my batteries. Of course, this is the NFAN 4200. And I've got these wires taped to the side. And I tried to do what was recommended in the Motion RC video by Captain Mike, which you see you've got four screws there on either side. And you take that board out and then you can run the wires through. A Couple of mine were just a little bit too short. And I decided, you know what, I'll just run it on the side and it should be just fine. And I kind of tightened things up, tidied them up a little bit. So for me, that should be good enough. I'm not terribly OCD. 
And that's pretty much it for the inside of the battery bay. I will drop this in here real quick actually and show you that A, when you have the battery in there, the nose will touch the ground, but if you don't, it will go back up onto its tail. And you probably don't wanna do that too often. That is some pretty thin balsa, I believe, that we've got for those uh, little fins back there. And probably wanna be a little bit smart about what kind of abuse you put those through. But this is roughly the CG. I haven't dialed it in perfect, but that's roughly where it is. And coming up next, we're gonna talk about radio settings. Okay, so now we're gonna go over some settings. And I wanna say first and foremost, feel free to give me your feedback on these settings, guys, especially those of you that have had this jet for a while. I am going roughly based off the recommendations from Deuces Wild. He has his, has great performance with it, loves it, so feel free to let me know what you think. I am always open to that kind of feedback. In fact, it has helped me a lot over the years, so thank you guys for those that have contributed in the past. All right, so first thing I wanna do is point out, I've got the timer set to three minutes. I know with this battery that I'm using, it should be easily get more than that, but that's a pretty good rule of thumb. Make sure you're in position to set up and land by about three minutes, just in case you need to do another pass or two especially on a maiden flight, that's critical. That's what I'm gonna remind myself of before my maiden flight, so hopefully it goes well. Knock on wood or something. The other thing I wanna point out is I've got the throttle gain, throttle trim bumped up quite a bit. Now, I was noticing that I had no throttle until I was over 5%, or actually over 20%. And that's just a no-go, there's no finesse or feel with a stick that way and I have found that over the years bumping up your your throttle gain on EDFs makes for a much better performance it doesn't matter if it's a 2s 4s whatever EDF jet it always makes it perform better at least for me I've got it's it gives you a lot more sensitivity on the throttle so that is great all right so now let's go to dual rates and let's do a quick look at my, excuse me, quick look at my low rate settings. We've got the aileron right there. And let's see what we got for high rates. Got the 80% right there. Now these are based roughly off of what Deuces Wild, good buddy of mine, recommended. I made a little couple tweaks to them based on what I prefer. Um, but he gave me a very nice baseline. All right, so let's go to elevator. And he said that it, at this plane, this jet, absolutely loves a lot of elevator and a lot of rudder. So that was my low rate setting and this is my high rate setting. So there you go. Let's switch it to rudder now. And that's the high rate. Of course, that's the low rate. Once I actually fly this, get it in the air, and get a feel for it, I'm sure I will make some adjustments from there. But honestly, things, a nice starting point with 30% expo and some flexibility with the, the dual rates and high, or, uh, high rates and low rates has always worked out well for me. So I'm hoping to keep that going, keeping that streak alive. So here, these are verbatim the recommended flap settings by Deuces Wild. He loves these settings. He's played with them a little bit. This is what he's got it distilled down to. So that's what I'm gonna go with. All right, coming up next, we're gonna do an EDF test. Coming up shortly, we are gonna test the 70 millimeter EDF unit. But before we do that, let's talk about the ESC. The ESC needs to be calibrated. I had the throttle trim set up way too high because I hadn't calibrated my ESC yet. So I did that and it helped out quite a bit. I also accidentally set the brake on it. You don't want that with an EDF unit, so keep that in mind. All right, so now I'm gonna put my hand here and with the other hand, I'm gonna give it some throttle and we are gonna hear this unit. 6S power. All right.
right, I hope that sound came through loud and clear. That was up to about 75% throttle, so there was a lot of wind in here. I'm not sure if the camera was shaking or what was going on, but that was fun. Coming up next, we're gonna test the control surfaces. Now we are gonna test the control surfaces. All right, so here we've got the ailerons. Nice amount of throw, probably even too much. According to my buddy Deuces Wild, this thing has plenty of throw from what I understand. So now we're gonna do the elevator. Apparently it likes a lot of elevator. Now, I found that if you push down I'm not giving it all the way, but you basically touch that. And this is on low rates and I backed it down to 80%. I set everything as far as that goes by the book, but it looks like we've got lots of throw. That's good. And let's do a little rudder action. Got this set to 80 as well. Looks like we've got lots of throw. And now let's do the flaps, half flaps, full flaps. Very nice. All right, coming up next, I'm gonna show you something on the underside that I want everyone to at least be aware of. It's not the worst thing in the world, but definitely something that if you're watching my video, I wanna add that value. Coming up next, we're gonna talk about that. What I wanted to talk about were these cheater holes. These are optimized to produce the best performance possible out of this EDF jet, and that's great. The downside is there's potential, depending on the, the surface you fly off of, whether it be grass or kind of gravelish type roads, to suck stuff into the EDF fan. These things suck in a lot of air. There's a lot of, uh, they're basically like a vacuum cleaner down here. So there's definitely a hazard with that. And I wanted to let you guys know that before I fly this, I'm going to modify it. Basically, I'm going to put a screen door mesh on there. I got some red paint from True Value, and I'm just gonna glue some stuff on there and call her good. That was Deuces Wild's, Deuces Wild's recommendation, and that's what I'm gonna do. Coming up next, we're gonna do our pros and cons. All right, guys, without flying it, here are our pros and cons. The build is very easy, very little glue is required, and the tool for wiring, snaking things through, is extremely valuable. I'm gonna use that for other planes. I'm so happy that I have that thing now, guys. It's awesome. And the airframe is another another uh, big pro because it's big. It's bigger than I thought, to be honest. I should have looked at the size, the specs uh, when I ordered it, but I just went ahead, hit the order button because everybody that I've talked to recommends this thing that has flown it. So I absolutely had to get it. Give it a try, it's only 229, it's big, it looks great. This detail, the color, the scheme, in person looks way better than it does in video and in pictures. So I'm hoping that my video does it justice. We'll see, let me know in the comments. That would be awesome. That pilot looks awesome, he looks like a badass. So that is cool. The battery bay is large, that's good. It gives you flexibility, you can add big batteries. You can adjust the CG, it gives you flexibility, and I really like flexibility with my battery bays. As long as it doesn't compromise other things in the process, of course. How can I not talk about the lights? That is a huge pro, probably my biggest pro overall without, like when I ordered it, the biggest thing that it had going for it was the lights at a 70 millimeter EDF jet for 229 pretty awesome. All right. And it also has flaps. Those are my preliminary pros. And as far as the cons go, really the only one is the way that those cheater holes are positioned underneath uh, to make sure you avoid sucking debris in the fan and, and causing issues that are non-pilot air related. That is something that's recommended. And I wish like the new L39 comes with those installed. I really wish this one had those covered like that too. But again, it's 229. It's not the newest, latest and greatest. So, so far, this is definitely GB Linden approved. Look for a maiden flight video coming up soon. Like, comment and subscribe and GB Linden out.